All right, so now that we have an expression for the time constant, which represents then how long it takes for the system to reestablish equilibrium, let's now actually calculate what are the new equilibrium concentrations and also calculate what is that time constant tau. So here I've actually got a plot of what this equilibrium does to after it hits the temperature shift, which is basically happening right here. This is when t is equal to zero, and then after that, what we saw or what we talked about before in the setup of the problem was that that's when my equilibrium constant k, that's when it goes from two to one. And so let's now calculate what is our new equilibrium concentrations. And so in that case, this just involves writing an ice table. So I've got an equilibrium between a and b. So I'll write i, c, e, representing the ice. Concentration of a naught over three is my initial concentration of a, two a naught, over 3 was my initial concentration of B. Both of these, the A we know gains x naught, the B is going to subtract x naught. And so at equilibrium we have A naught over 3 plus x naught, and for B it's concentration of A naught or 2 A naught over 3 minus x naught. And that's something again that's plotted here on the right hand side or sorry, on the left-hand side, where in red I've got my concentration of B, and in blue I have my concentration of A. And we can see that my B decreases and my A increases, which is reflected in my equilibrium constant, capital K, going from 2 to 1, meaning that we expect the, the reactants to get bigger and the products to get smaller as my rate constant decreases. And again, where my x naught fits into all of this is again the x naught is the difference between the two equilibria. So there is my x naught there, and this is again here is my x naught here, which represents the distance between my initial, which is what I have written down here, and my final, which is just denoted here in my change, which is what I have written down here, and I'll add the naught into that case. So my next step then is just to apply standard equilibrium values. So here's my equilibrium or my equilibrium constant at the new equilibrium and that's equal to the concentration of B at the new equilibrium divided by the concentration of A at the new equilibrium. So my K at this new equilibrium is equal to 1 and that's equal to well my concentration of B at the new equilibrium is just 2 times A naught over 3 minus X naught and that's divided by concentration of A naught over 3 plus X naught I multiply both sides by this denominator, and so what I get is concentration of A naught over 3 plus X naught, and that's equal to 2 A naught over 3 minus X naught. I then continue and solve. I'm going to move this minus X naught on the right hand side to the left hand side, this A naught over 3 over to the right hand side, so I'm going to get 2 X naught is equal to 2 A naught over 3 minus A naught over 3, which means I have x naught is equal to a naught over 6. And so this value, this a naught over 6, this should start to make a little bit more sense with what I, how I've drawn the figure here, which gives you the basic answer as to what is going on. Because if I continue and I just say, well, the actual equilibrium value here, well now I can write a naught over 3 plus a naught over 6, and what that gives me then is equal to a naught over 2. And my 2 a naught over 3 minus a naught over 6, well that's also equal to a naught over 2. And that should make perfect sense in, intuitively as well because we've set our equilibrium expression such that my k is equal to 1, which means my concentration of B has to be equal to my concentration of A. And so that's why then both of these lines here that I've got on my plot, like they both meet each other. They both, my concentration of B decreases until it meets the concentration of A as it increases. And so then the next question that we could ask is, is how long does this process take? How do we quantify how long this process takes to, to, to achieve this new equilibrium? And so in this case, then, this is a, where we'll bring tau back in. And so we can then say, well, our rate constant k, or sorry, our equilibrium constant k, well, this is equal to kf over kr. And we need to start quantifying what our rate constants are so we can calculate tau. And so we know that's equal to 1. 
And so that tells us then that Kf is equal to Kr after we hit, like after this temperature change happens at t is equal to zero. And so if we were to calculate our tau, then remember our tau is equal to the inverse of Kr plus Kf. And so then since we know Kf is equal to Kr, we can say our tau is then equal to Kr plus Kr which means that our tau is equal to 1 over 2kr. And so where does that fit onto this plot? Well, if you notice down here, I've multiplied my time, or my scale of my time is kr times t, which means that on this plot, if I want to take this, this tau, this, this time constant, and actually plot it on this plot, um, to get a time out of it, then I'm actually going to multiply it by kr, which means that my tau on this plot is equal to 1 half. And so where that puts me here is here's my 1 half, so there's my spot on this plot where I'm saying that's where the value with which I've gone from x naught to x naught divided by roughly about 3. Really it's about by e, but we can just say by 3. And so then that time then is, or that tau then represents this time, how long it takes to go from t is equal to 0 to get to this point where I roughly have, or I've gone to about x naught over e, or if you want to think in terms of a number, then it's just over e, over 3. And again, that's how we would quantify how long it takes for this process to occur, to go from one equilibrium to another once we shift um, our temperature such that our equilibrium constant moved, in this case, from 2 to 1. In summary, many processes must take into account both backwards and forwards reactions. Both should be included in the rate law expression. Furthermore, the equilibrium constant k can be related to the rate constants for a process. And finally, as systems move to equilibrium, one metric that quantifies the time it takes to reach equilibrium is the time constant, denoted as tau, which depends on the rate constants for the reaction.